everyone, and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History's 20th Century Style Icons. This time, we're looking at a lady whose sense of style should really be talked about a whole lot more, in my opinion. Bobby Gentry, who was suggested to me by my friend and UFH group member, artist Lou Allison. Thanks, Lou. What a great suggestion. Out of all the videos I put together for the channel, this was probably the hardest in terms of research. Because Bobby Gentry was such a huge star in the late 1960s and early 70s, I thought it would be very easy to research her life. Far from it. She is as mysterious as her songs were. Although born in Mississippi, her mother actually moved to California with her and uh, Bobby Gentry was enrolled in UCLA as a philosophy major, and this isn't really the trajectory one expects for a country singer. This was no coal miner's daughter, but it adds to this sort of strangeness about Bobby Gentry. Who was this woman? I became so obsessed with her, trying to find out about her. Her first big hit, of course, was Ode to Billy Joe in 1967, this rambling, eerie, beautiful song about a suicide. You remember it, of co course, sir. The time that Billy Joe McAllister jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge. And surrounding this song at the time were all of these speculations about why Billy Joe jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge. What drove this character to suicide? It really was like a talking point. Other hits included Fancy, but she would also cross over into mainstream pop as well, a recording covers of Burt Bacharach songs, for example, I'll Never Fall In Love Again. And I, I think she also recorded Raindrops Keep Falling On My Head. Take a look at this, though. I love this. This is a piece of promotional blurb from Capitol Records. It is so 60s. The copy, Ode to Billy Joe. Her name is Bobby Gentry, the year's fastest rising talent. Blah, blah, blah. Her name is Bobby Gentry. But you know what? When I was putting this video together, so many times I thought all I know about this woman is a list of hit songs, the fact that she was married three times. None of her marriages lasted over a year, which sort of adds to her mystique. And that, yep, her name is Bobby Gentry. Now, as you just saw, Bobby Gentry was a beautiful woman. She actually made money as a model before she went into music. But it was her style that we're going to talk about today, and it was unique. Remember, in the late 1960s, early 70s, most country artists really were dressing in this highly feminized, uh, romantic style. Lots of gingham, lots of lace, jumping on the Victorian revival with high lacy collars and cameos and things like that. And then there was Bobby Gentry. Take a look at these outfits here. She was almost like a female Elvis, wearing these skin-tight pantsuits. I love the red one, this kind of Toreador look. It was very masculine, but at the same time very sexy. She had a look that was all her own. She did not go for that romanticized country Victoriana ultra-feminine look at all, and yet she may have probably been the sexiest of all country singers ever. But of course, her trademark was her incredible hair. This enormous teased bouffant mane of jet black elbow length hair. It was absolutely stunning, as was her makeup. Lots of double eyelashes, everything very matte and kind of peachy. She was exquisite, and these mysterious songs coming out of this exotic looking creature, all of it was very uncountry, if you know what I mean, for the era. So, Bobby Gentry is a style icon of the 20th century, not simply because she was beautiful and looked great, but because she single-handedly redefined 
how a female country singer could look. You didn't have to be dolled up in lace and gingham and little skirts and all of that. You could be cool. In the mid-1970s, Bobby Gentry retired from music and retired completely from public life. Nobody knows, at least I don't know in my research, what she has been doing for the past 40 years. I was desperate to find a picture of her now. And I searched and I searched and I couldn't find one and I couldn't find one. And then I stumbled upon one, which I probably shouldn't be using. It's from somebody's blog, but it didn't have a copyright. And I'm not even sure that it is Bobby Gentry. If it really is, I'm going to show you the picture and be prepared to be stunned. She's over 70 now and is as beautiful as ever. I think that is Bobby Gentry. I actually, when I was putting this together, put a picture of the younger Bobby Gentry next to this one and was comparing facial details quite forensically. But what has really convinced me that this is Bobby Gentry is that, in fact, in the photograph, she's standing in front of a mirror so you can see the back of her head. And look at all this thick, beautiful hair rolled into this chic chignon. So Bobby Gentry still as beautiful and stylish and confident as ever. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this rather mysterious episode of 20th Century Style Icons. And I hope that I've convinced you that Bobby Gentry's unique sense of exotic sexy style should be celebrated and talked about a whole lot more. Thank you again to my friend Lou Allison for suggesting Bobby Gentry and hey you should definitely google Lou Allison and look at her incredible art. There we go, plug for a friend. You can contact me through my website, no mystery there, amandahalley.com. Join our Facebook group. We always have loads of fun over there. I'm back every week with more on the ultimate fashion history. So just click the little circle to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye for now.